Welcome to my studio and to my world. This is where I spend most of my time. And today I'm going to share with you a story that I've been putting together uh, for most of my life and remembering some events uh, that have happened that are very important in my life. If it's okay with you, I'm going just to imagine that you are my grandchildren uh, listening to a story that uh, I'm telling. It's not a story about me, but it's a story about the people I've had the opportunity to be with and to work with and do some, I think, important things, uh, which not everyone gets such an opportunity as I've had to do this. My grandchildren, like so many grandchildren, are so busy that their story, that my story is not nearly as important as it's theirs, and I'm glad for that because when I was their age, their, my story was the most important story in the world, and I didn't have time for my grandparents to sit and listen to a lot of stories. However, I had the fortunate, uh, fortunate, good fortune of living close to both of my grandparents and listening to some of their stories. But I had the opportunity to work with some wonderful people, uh, including uh, Miller and Linda Fuller, along with President Jimmy Carter. Uh, this story is interwoven with a lot of stories that I'll talk about. Uh, it's uh, very difficult for me to tell the story in an organized way without getting sidetracked at times. And I'll do that along the way. And just imagine that uh, I'm your granddaddy and I'm just telling your story. I don't have any moving pictures. All of these are still pictures, nothing in terms of the modern world. But uh, the people that I'm going to talk about are very important people. And as I say, this story goes way back and there'll be a lot of things that I'll talk about as we make the journey. I had the good fortune of uh, meeting some uh, people who really gave me opportunities that I would never have had. In the lower left-hand uh, picture, you'll see uh, Dr. Bob Maddox and his family gathered around uh, President and Mrs. Carter and not too many years ago. It was because of Bob that I had the opportunity to work with the Carters. The letter that you see in the left-hand top is a letter that was sent out soon after President Carter and Mrs. Carter became part of the movement that Millard and Linda uh, Miller started years ago in America's Georgia. But it even precedes uh, the beginning of that story. I'll share that with you uh, as closely as I can chronologically. But Bob called me uh, and asked me if I would like to work with the Carters on a project in New York City. I had never been to New York City, and I saw it as a great opportunity. I didn't really know exactly what I was getting to. I had never heard of the uh, America's uh, Project of Habitat for Humanity, but I signed on. But uh, even before that, I'll have to give you some background information about Bob and how Bob and I became friends years ago. It really it goes back to Calhoun, Georgia, when Bob was a pastor of the First Baptist Church there, and I came to be uh, the pastor of the Children's Church. And soon after, we became friends and did some things together. He recommended me uh, to go to the Vienna First Baptist Church, which I did. And I went there in uh, the fall of uh, 70, I believe it was. And uh, it was soon thereafter that uh, Jimmy Carter was elected governor of Georgia. And if you go to a small town uh, Baptist church, you'll meet a lot of politicians. So while I was there, I had the opportunity of meeting uh, lots of uh, politicians. But one of the connections with the First Baptist Church is that Jody Powell, who was the press secretary, secretary during the Carter administration, his mom and, and dad were members of this congregation. But this congregation also had the distinction of having uh, Senator Walter F. George as a member of that church. And one of my favorite places in the First Baptist Church is the George Chapel, 
which was named after him and renovated in a beautiful little room where I often would go for my quiet time. But then I met a lots of people who were uh, in state government and those who would come uh, running for a position would always come through Viana and we would meet. Uh, and so uh, it gave me an opportunity to be exposed to a lot of people. I was a, a big fish in a little pond and had the opportunity of engaging with a lot of people. But uh, the Vine of First Baptist Church is still a very prominent church in my life and the formation of my ministry. And it was here in 1976 that I entered into the doctoral program at the New Orleans, ba New Orleans Baptist Seminary. As a result of that, several of us, of us in the area were engaged in the same study. And so we began writing together. Uh, one of those people was uh, Bruce Edwards, who was the pastor at the Plains Church at the time that Jimmy Carter was running for election as president of the United States. And that brought me into close contact with him. Throughout this story, there's uh, carnage along the way that uh, I'll have to mention as a part of my story because out of that carnage, some good things came. But it's a matter of fact that when we are on the trail of life, we are going to run into the trials that come. And if you know my story in that regard, you know that the trials of life lead to our trust in God that lead to the testing of our life that ultimately lead to the triumphs in our life. Well, it was here that I got acquainted with the Powells. I got acquainted with Jody and his family. To say that they knew me would be a misstatement, but to say I knew them would be correct. The same is true with most of these people <clears throat> that I'll mention. I knew them, but none of them would remember or know me. So the story is not about me, but it is about them. But it's my story that uh, is an important part of my life. So Vina Church played an, an integral part weaving the story together. Bob had served this church. The Powells were in this church. There were other connections in this church that led us to support and be a part of the movement to elect Carter as president. And we became very involved in watching that unfold. That, of course, with Bruce led to some carnies that we'll talk about shortly. But the story for me for this trip began at the Second Baptist Church of College Park. This was in the year of 1984 in September, I came to this church in the fall of eight, uh, in the spring of 84. And as a result, I was here at the time that I got the letter and the call from Bob. And this was three years after the uh, president had left office and he had gotten involved with the Habitat program. And it was here that the Trailways bus that you see behind my family in the top left-hand corner, it tells you how long ago it was. This is where we welcomed uh, Jimmy Carter, had our picture made with him. It ha so happened that uh, Jody at that time had been in our swimming pool, and uh, she had green hair. And there's another picture that I'll not include here that has uh, it appeared in the paper with uh, President Carter looking at her hair and commenting about her green hair. And, uh, of course, the middle picture there is uh, Rosalind Carter, and then the right-hand picture to top is uh, me greeting, greeting President Carter. And in the bo bottom left-hand corner is a plaque that was um, included in a mounted hammer on a piece of the wood that came from the project there in New York. And uh, I, I somehow, in the process of time, I lost the hammer, and uh, so I just decided to keep the plaque. But this is the beginning of the trip for me. Uh, on that September afternoon, on a Saturday, uh, this bus rolled into our parking lot along with uh, a few people that came from the Americas area 
and all the people in Atlanta were meeting at the Second Baptist Church of College Park, where I served as pastor. And when uh, we all gathered there, we uh, will, I'll show you some pictures in a moment that will tell you more about that gathering. Here's a picture of uh, Bruce Edwards. Bruce was the pastor of the Plains Baptist Church at the time that President Carter was being uh, uh, elected as uh, the nominee for the, uh, for the uh, Office of Presidency. And uh, Bruce became a part of that carnage because, as always, whenever there's a public pe pe person, there are people who want to make a statement. And there were those who made a statement to integrate the Plains Baptist Church. Ultimately, as a result of the disagreement, uh, Bruce lost his job there. And ultimately, he went to be the pastor of the Makakilo Baptist Church in uh, Hawaii, and, uh, and on an occasion, years after this, Bruce and I swapped houses, and Walena and I stayed three weeks in Makakilo at his house, and he stayed three weeks in our house. I put it alongside of the, the location of the New York Project because I sort of felt like that um, Bruce got the short end of the deal, but out of it, he was able to, out of that carnage, he was able to take the ruins of what happened to him along the way and make a wonderful life and ministry there in Hawaii. To the right is the uh, one view of the project that we took on, which is a six-story building, and uh, I'll tell you how my first impression of the project was that it was totally impossible. Uh, of course, this was my first of go trip to New York City. When I saw this building, uh, my heart sank. I had no idea that there could be anything done with this building. But finally, it became 19 uh, residences for people who are still living in that apartment today. But out of the travels of life, there are difficulties, and Bruce met one of those difficulties, but rose to uh, stand tall, even though he was dealt a pretty severe blow. And so out of the ruins of life, we all can make a new life. Well, also, the church that he served, which is on the right, the Plains Baptist Church, it suffered a division, and out of that division came the Maranatha Church that remains today a very small congregation. It is a congregation that uh, President Carter went with that uh, uh, is no longer uh, associated with the Southern Baptist Convention. A division came there, not only two churches divided, people who were uh, members of the community and family all had a terrific division as a result, a disagreement over the integration of the church. For us now, as we look back on it, it seems to be almost a, 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 a passing thought as to how insignificant the racial differences were then. And uh, so the prejudice continues to live and I hope we've made some progress in that area, but this is a part of the carnage along this way. But these are pictures in the gymnasium at the Second Baptist Church where there were people from the Second Baptist Church that gathered there to welcome and to greet those who came from America with the Carters. On the left at the top, you see uh, Dot Smith, one of the older members of our church, getting an autograph by President Carter. And then on the bottom left, I'm presenting uh, President Carter with a check for uh, money that was raised and given by an individual in the church for the Habitat Project. To the uh, back of him, the tall man and the uh, lady, Ennis Millard and Linda Fuller, great folks. And then, of course, my little girl's on somebody's shoulder back there. I'm not sure, sure who's uh, got her above the crowd, but uh, uh, she's a, a mother of teenagers now. 
But in the middle of there is a group that greeted uh, uh, the Carter delegate, and uh, that's me with a funny expression on my face. And there's an article there in the local paper about the Carters uh, making this trip. But uh, as we <clears throat> as I celebrate with the Carters, I have to say that was this was my first time to actually meet them uh, and to. Uh, began a journey that was life transforming in ways for me. We got on that bus in our parking lot and made the journey, uh, I believe, of 23 hours to New York City. Of course, President and Mrs. Carter rode the bus as we did. They didn't ask for any special favors, nor did the Millers ask for any special, uh, the Fullers asked for any special favors. They were a part of a team that was going up to do uh, a project of building or attempting to uh, build and renovate a building for people to li live in. On the right, you see uh, Millard uh, holding up a hammer, and he uh, wrote a number of books, one of which is The Theology of the Hammer, and I believe that book was written at the end of this trip. I'm going to take you to a page that I hope that you'll uh, take time to go to, and it's uh, uh, a, a PDF file that will tell you the story uh, of Millard Fuller and his life. First paragraph says that when Millard Fuller was a boy growing up in Alabama, uh, uh, his father gave him a young pig, and Millard fattened the pig, and sold it for a good price. Then he used the money to earn uh, money earned to buy and raise more young pigs, which he also fattened and uh, sold. The story begins by t saying this is how Miller fell in love with money. And uh, his story unfolds in a wonderful way, and I hope you will take time to read it. And it is the story of a man who, in college, uh, soon afterwards became uh, a self-made uh, self a millionaire. Uh, and uh, his story is about how uh, you can become a millionaire and still uh, not be satisfied with life. And so it is the story of how becoming a me millionaire uh, did not uh, satisfy uh, his life. And so... It is a story of how he and Linda had everything that anybody could possibly want in life except the satisfaction of, uh, of life. And as a result, they began to examine their life, and it took them on another journey that I have to weave into this story as well. This is a similar bus, the one that we took uh, from the parking lot of Second Baptist Church all the way to New York City. And it was a long trip, and I remember it well. This is a little more information about Millard Fuller and Habitat for Humanity. It was uh, prior, just prior to 1976 that uh, Millard and Linda uh, examined their own life, and ultimately he decided to give his money uh, to uh, away, spend time at the Koinonia Farm in America's Georgia, which I'll tell you more about later. And so in 1976, after some time at the Koinonia Farm, he and Linda founded Habitat for Humanity. And it was in 1984 in September, along with 41 other volunteers, I joined them as we made our way to New York City uh, to work on the first Carter Habitat project, which led to more than uh, 30 years of President Carter working on projects around the world. I only worked on two of the Carter projects, the first one, and then I skipped the second one, and I went on the third one to uh, Chicago, and that story we'll look at shortly. But I have to tell you about Cornania Farms. Cornania Farms was founded by uh, 
Clarence Jordan, who wrote the book to the left top. It's a translation of Matthew and John into what he called the cotton patch version of these gospels. It is, uh, Clarence Jordan was a scholar, a professor, but he wanted to try an experiment uh, helping poor people. And so he selected the area just uh, south and east of uh, America's Georgia to found uh, what he called the Cornelia Farms. And those of you who are into your Christian uh, journey in Greek know that that is a term for fellowship. And so he came and founded a farm and began to work local people and build relationships with them and uh, continue to spread his understanding of the gospel, but also living out the gospel in old Rawls. And so Millen had heard of this experiment, and he wanted to be a part of it. So he contacted Dr. Jordan, and he came and lived there, managed the farm, ultimately becoming the founder of the Habitat for Humanity project that he founded in 1976. But this is a wonderful story. I hope you'll look it up because it was fraught with all kind of carnage as well because in that region of the world where I grew up and where most of us grew up, there's a great deal of prejudice and discrimination. And Miller tells a story uh, that, uh, and I heard him tell this story when my friend uh, Jack Key who was a salesman a, representing a chocolate com company, one of his clients was the Cornelia Farm, where he uh, went, and Jack had an unusual way of uh, selling. He provided services. He was not selling them chocolate at that particular time, but they needed someone to solve problems that the other chocolate had caused. And so, I went with him to call on the Cornelia Farms, where I met Mrs. Jordan. Dr. Jordan had already been, I was already deceased. And Miller took time to show us around the farm that day. And he carried us out to a uh, pecan orchard. And he said, we don't know exactly, but somewhere out here is where uh, Clarence is buried. And it's where I'll be buried as well. And he uh, began to tell the story of how Dr. Jordan died. And he tried to get someone, he died at his home, and tried to get someone to declare his death. And I believe he put him in his own station wagon and carried him into town before he could find anybody that would declare him dead. He had created so much uh, ants in the community with his racial progressiveness that many of the people objected to him and were hostile toward him. And Miller told that story about how he had to carry him into town in order to find someone who would declare Dr. Jordan deceased. And Miller uh, loved Dr. Jordan and continued uh, to work with them. This is a, a article out of a guidepost where Millard uh, years ago had presented to them how his, uh, it says here 17 years ago, was when he declared uh, that he was going to get on this project. He wrote an article for Guidepost, and then when he founded the Habitat for Humanity, he wrote another article telling them about it, and this is uh, his story about how uh, Clarence Jordan died and how he became a part of the partnership there at Cornelia Farms. It's a great story. And what I'm telling you are stories that you need to research for yourself to gain some history and insight into our own Southern way of living and how we resolve issues and how uh, things have changed. And I hope you'll take time to do just that. This, again, is a, another article about Millard. Millard did not really gain any notoriety until Carter partnered with him, 
And one of the things that I learned along the way that whenever people rise to that kind of status, everybody wants to know you, wants to be a part of the project. And it was at the partnership with uh, President Carter that Millard Fuller and the Habitat for Humanity project really took uh, off. As a result, there have been uh, innumerable people who have uh, housing today that would not have had it uh, otherwise. And those of you who live in Atlanta know that uh, Clark Howard uh, has partnered with Habitat for years, and he too has been a part of building many houses in the Atlanta area. And this kind of story could be, tell lo be told locally all over the world of how people in local and international ways have continued to build housing for people who are in in need. Well, the bus that carried us, this is not the bus, but it is a picture of one similar to the one that we rode. I had never been to New York City and was excited about that. But the day it was breaking as we got into uh, New Jersey, and it was on a Sunday, we left on a Saturday afternoon, it was on a Sunday that uh, we uh, were about time for worship, and they began to look for a church that we might attend. Now, can you imagine serving a small church and a bus from the south pulls up into your parking lot, and on the bus is the former president of the United States along with 41 other people. I can imagine my heart uh, nearly stopping if that had been the case. But nonetheless, we were welcome to this church at Belmar, uh, New Jersey, Baptist Church. A very few people there, but it happened to be communion service. And the uh, pastor graciously welcomed everybody. But as he was doing communion, he ran out of the elements, which uh, precipitated a conversation later that uh, President Carter engaged me in regarding what would I have done if I had been in the pastor's situation. And, uh, of course, there's nothing that exciting about my contribution there, but to have been uh, uh, challenged by or engaged by uh, the president to talk about that was for really a memorable, a memorable event. But I can imagine uh, for this pastor, this would be an occasion that he will never forget as well as he remembers his life. At the top left, you see the Metropolitan Baptist Church. Uh, Dr. Bolin was the pastor of that church, and you'll see him in the picture to the right. Uh, as he is presenting the plaque that I mentioned to you, which was similar to the one that I received as he's presenting one to President and Mrs. Carter on a Sunday morning as we worship there. There's another picture at the top right uh, of the church and the uh, Metro Baptist Church, which happened to be right across from the bus uh, terminal for New York, New York City, and all night long, there were buses coming and going. And any time you were out front in the church, it was just filled with the noise of the city as well as those big buses moving back and forth. And the bottom left uh, corner is a picture of President and Mrs. Carter as they worked. We slept in this church. Uh, I'm sure that some of you have done the same thing, but I happen to have a bed when I slept, so we slept in the church, and this was our place where we took many of our meals. We did many things uh, after hours. Uh, I was not really up to doing them, but I did them anyway. We went to a Broadway play. We went to a special outing for uh, meals and things of this nature. But after working with President Carter for a day, I uh, had very little energy left, but nonetheless, I stretched it in order to be with the group and to experience everything they were experiencing in, in the city. But this is a good view of the 19 uh, apartments that were uh, and are, have been renovated 
and now house 19 different families. I'll introduce you particularly to one of the persons that we met that day uh, and who uh, came from Chicago to, and back and stayed with us in our house overnight as she waited uh, her airplane to go back to New York City. But as you can see how, uh, uh, how challenging this project was, and I had never been a part of a project that uh, had such a massive vision about what could be done uh, with this project. But uh, to the left there is uh, President Carter, who uh, is at the international headquarters that is located or was then located in uh, America's Georgia. That story is also one of carnage, uh, of division. Uh, at an uh, inopportune time, the Habitat for Humanity actually uh, severed relationships with Millard Fuller. And Millard actually began a uh, housing center uh, in Americas alongside of Habitat because he still had the vision of helping people even though Habitat put him to the side. The right uh, picture is uh, President Carter uh, patching one of the many holes in the floors that were there. Some, Many of the floors were gone completely, and we had to put uh, the uh, 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 joist in in order to establish a place for new flooring. And uh, it was a major project. These are pictures which are very dim, but uh, President Carter had a way of inviting and asking specific people to come and uh, work with him because he wanted to get to know the people on the project to give them the opportunity to be uh, um, work directly with him. And I was chosen one, some, one morning to go down early before the group came because uh, Carter wanted to get some work done because he later was going to be interrupted by some kind of a speaking engagement or a meeting with other people. And so I was selected, and this is us loading our stuff into the vehicle of the Secret Service uh, in order to take us down to the project. And it was a very interesting conversation with the Carters uh, as we made our trip down. Uh, and uh, I felt uh, honored to, to be there again. It is not uh, about me, but it is about those who I have met because uh, President Carter never remembered me after that. And I understand why because so many people have been a part of his life. However, I engaged in a number of uh, speaking uh, engagements with them on other occasions. I went to the uh, Carter Center for uh, several occasions. Uh, and so I did spend a great deal of time engaging and interacting with the Carters. But again, they meet so many people. But this is a, a part of our preparation for going downtown. Now, this is a, a, a picture of days of work. Uh, on the left there, you see the building uh, and all the uh, uh, vegetation uh, in, in the front there or in the back of the lot. And then after it was cleared up, look at the one down on the bottom, and you'll see how it was cleared up. Every day, crowds gathered outside when they learned that President Carter was working on this project. Interesting kinds of things would happen. He'd come to the window and wave at people. Whenever he was coming or going, he would engage the people in conversation. And it was very interesting. Uh, the numbers of people who came and, of course, many of them looking for some uh, publicity or some connection that might get them just a few minutes of fame, uh, which is uh, part of all of us, I suppose, maybe even a part of why I made this trip myself. But uh, this was common wherever 
President Carter went, there were crowds that gathered and greeted him. And I never remember anybody being uh, unkind, but uh, just simply engaging him in conversation. And this, of course, was a major reason for Carter and the project. Uh, not taking any way from his, anything away from his work because he worked diligently and had great energy for a man that was his age and of any age, Franklin. And I was warned to uh, frazzle at the end of the day, and he was ready to keep on going. Slept apparently very little. Slept in the same rooms uh, as all of the others uh, that gathered in the church. As a matter of fact, the story is told that there was a young couple that had uh, was on the trip that had just recently married, and he and Mrs. Carter gave up their room in order for this young couple uh, to have that room uh, to spend the night. And so that's the kind of person he and the persons he and Mrs. Carter are. Uh, their whole life gives evidence of that, and uh, I'm glad to have had the opportunity of knowing them. To the left, you'll see the building uh, as it uh, is, and uh, to the right, at the top, you see Ms. Uh, President Carter, Mrs. Carter, engaged in work, and this is not just for uh, photo opportunities. They really work. Uh, President Carter on the bottom left is greeting people coming and going out of the building, He's showing somebody, he's standing there, well, you see the open windows, and the whole area uh, looked as if it had been burned out. And uh, you see there's a group of people to the bottom right there that were a part of one of the many projects, and many people, groups of people who came in. To the left of the lady who is to stop wearing the habitat habit, that is Jessica Wallace, uh, spells her name W-A-L-L-A-C, the same pronunciation as mine. That is how we knew her in 1986 when we saw her last. And then at uh, the middle of there, at the right, there's a video that you can see on YouTube of her as a owner still living in the project that was built for her. And these other pictures are pictures of the Carters at work at different projects because they say work they worked all around the world on projects for habitat and so but the jessica wallace story is an interesting one when uh, we worked with her in new york she went to chicago to help and work with others those who are partners in this they have to contribute uh, so many hours in working on their own project in order to be uh, eligible to live in a habitat project. It has a great uh, story about how you hand, it's not a hand up, but it is helping hand to help you up. And so I like that as a uh, concept of how you help other people, even though it's not faultless. And uh, I'll share with you later what I consider to be one of the tragedies or the carnage along the way as well. But these are memorable pictures uh, of Chicago. Again, these are some news uh, items that came out. The left, Carter was addressing people on Labor Day. Uh, David Hartman, who uh, was with ABC, came to that project. We met uh, Hartman in Vienna when uh, Carter was being uh, let, when he was elected as president, and of course, uh, the news people were in America very often and were going to the outer regions to find stories, and he came to do a short story on uh, our life at the Vine of First Baptist Church, and so we met him on that occasion. Uh, to the top left, there are a couple of guys. Uh, there's a man, husband and wife, the popes that were from uh, America, and then a man who became a very good friend, John Wayne Hall, uh, who is deceased uh, because he was a, from Calhoun area and a guy from uh, America said we didn't know very well, but got to meet him. On the right is a man from uh, uh, the Blue uh, LJ area where uh, 
uh, President Carter had a mountain home and met some of the local people there, and he was working on a project. But this is how closely I had the opportunity of working with the president. I was a gopher, and I was uh, on the scaffold with him that particular day, and maybe one other day, I was working directly with him. And again, uh, I was fatigued by the end of the day because he uh, is a very hard and very skilled worker. And so I had to get up and down, on and off that uh, scaffold, up and down stairs and on and on. And uh, I was a young man then, but I could not keep up with that project uh, as as I, uh, as perhaps I was able to a little later in life. But that's one of the places that I worked. And this, of course, is a picture uh, as we were nearing the end of the New York project. Of course, everybody had a photo op, and this is mine again. Uh, I know the Carters. The Carters do not know. It's not a story about me, but it's a story about the people I have had the privilege of working with. With And, of course, again, on the left is uh, me continuing my work as a gopher. I'm in the background in the overalls helping uh, President Carter. And, of course, there's two other pictures of Carter engaged in his work. And, again, these were not photo ops. He is actually working and working very, very hard. And uh, he's showing someone around uh, the project. I have a notion it's someone that he's expecting a, a donation from. To the right, just outside of the church, there was a, next to the church, a funeral home, and there was a disposed couch there. And this man uh, was climbing out of that couch one day as we, or one evening when we walked out. I worked closely with a man named Virgil from East Point area who was uh, representing a large construction company there. And uh, I put this picture in because uh, Virgil was a man who was a very humble man, uh, who was uh, just a, an experienced uh, carpenter and major project manager. And I watched him and the President Carter in one of those uh, meetings uh, sort of tee off and square off with one another regarding how to do a project. The same thing happened on the project. And it was interesting to me that uh, the experience uh, was able to trump even uh, the power of a former president because Virgil was knew what he was doing, and he was able even to uh, instruct the president, uh, former president in the United States, how to do his work and what needed to be done. And I like that because uh, it was an example of how, even though uh, power and experience come together, the experience seemed to have worn out. The right is a, a story that appeared in, in one of the New York papers about the Carter Project and the people walking around on the streets looking uh, around at the area where we were working uh, and went through a lot of the areas. And uh, I'm in the background there as we were making our way down the street. Now, to the right is the bed where I slept on uh, slept in the church in New York. Uh, I took my mattress out into the sanctuary. I was more comfortable there. You see the chair where I had all my belongings, and it was another room where many of those uh, slept, and President Scar Carter slept in the same room. But I preferred to have the mattress on the floor out in the sanctuary, and I slept very well, well there, just like I've watched a number of people sleep very well as I've spoken in church. And you'll see some of the construction projects there. But that's the New York project, one that uh, continued until it was completed, Today, there are 19 families living in there, and uh, it's become a very fashionable area and come back as a result of the beginning work of Habitat, and that area has come back to a degree as a result of that. But then we, two years later, uh, I uh, 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 joined the Chicago trip, and on that Chicago trip, it was quite a different project. 
this is what we came to when we made our way to Chicago. And we do travel uh, on a bus to Chicago, but somehow my memory bank is not as clear about that trip uh, as it was the New York trip. But the foundation, the uh, concrete was laid and ready for work to begin. As a matter of fact, you can see some of the uh, areas are already marked off and uh, some of the uh, work is already started. But that's where we began. But in a week's time, this is going to rise from that, what you see right there, to a four-plex building. And uh, you'll see pictures that are mixed. Uh, people came to see the project. A lot of, again, activity around what was going on and people were excited when particularly the president came they came to engage in what was going on to the left you'll see uh one of the business meetings this is uh where you get together and talk about the project and uh what job each person is going to have and etc and but you'll see as i show you the pictures how it grows to the right at the top, you'll see uh, the church. Uh, it's a Lutheran church where we worshiped on Sunday. And you'll see the people gathered uh, at the bottom right. And uh, this is the people at the hotel where we stayed. And uh, when I say hotel, I'll show you what it looks like shortly. And it's certainly nothing uh, that, uh, that would uh, excite you about going to. But you see on the left there, the project as far as outside is pretty much uh, weathered in. It was a flat roof, and it's a fourplex. And uh, on the right, you see pictures of three guys that did not know one another until they got to this project, and they formed a friendship that I'm sure for them perhaps is still going on. But you see uh, at the bottom two, the uh, close to finished product. Product. But in that week's time, uh, a family moved in before we left. All of it was not complete. It was not done all by the people on this trip. There were lots of uh, other groups that j joined in. I think even some uh, maybe uh, paid construction came in to work and to make sure that the family was moving in by the time it, this was completed. But it was an amazing thing to see it go from that uh, slab to the completion in a matter of a week. But one of the interesting things about uh, celebrity, in particular people uh, with the kind of reputation of uh, President Carter, it also uh, attracts other people. When they come, it gives them some notoriety, some camera time, etc. And it was interesting to me that Chuck Colson, uh, who you may remember as a part of the Watergate conspiracy, chose to come to this meeting and come and work on this project. And it so happened that the incident that he was going to read there in that project, I happened to be standing next to a bank of phones uh, where we were putting money in the phones and calling home. And I heard him, uh, overheard him as he was sharing with somebody else this very story. As you may know, the story of Chuck Colson, as a matter of his prison experience, he uh, found Christ as his Savior and became a proponent of a prison fellowship ministry where he had uh, his his goal and purpose is to was to minister to those who were in prison. And there's a sort of a funny statement there that uh, he uh, describes how his uh, first encounter with the president ended up in a uh, prison sentence. But uh, he had a similar experience with, uh, uh, with uh, President Carter. It did not end up in a prison sentence, but just hard labor. And uh, they made fun of this together as they talked about it openly before the cameras. And this is just a one minute read about that incident. So that's one of many uh, things I think about 
one of the things that I remember that goes back to the New York Project was that uh, President Carter, again, was a spokesman uh, for uh, the project. It was a fundraiser for the project. And on one day when we were late leaving the project, uh, traffic was terrible. And even the bus driver and all of the people that were with uh, the president could not get through the traffic. And President Carter had an engagement with uh, the movie star uh, and comedian Phyllis Diller. And they would have an evening meal. He, of course, I know expecting to get a large uh, contribution for her from her. So uh, he was afraid he was going to miss the appointment. So he and, uh, of course, some of those protecting him got out of the bus and jogged back to the church where we were staying so that he could get dressed and meet that occasion, which he made the occasion, but I don't think he was able to get a shower before he went. But these are some of the kinds of uh, things that person in that uh, place, they are able to attract people and to get an audience with people that none of us uh, could possibly do. This is, uh, these are more pictures about the project. The bottom right is a picture of the grass out front. Even grass and flowers were placed in pla place when this family actually was moved into one of the apartments. I don't know how much of that was for, uh, just for publicity. You'll see another of uh, the two on the left also have some of the finished uh, products there. I'm sure that many others had a lot of work to do, but nonetheless, at least one family moved during the time we were there. So here's four apartments in seven days. There are more pictures there on the left where I was working uh, and the picture of the apartments and the church where we worshiped on uh, a Sunday. Uh, this was my bed. It was an old hotel, and uh, it had. Uh, this is not a regular bed. This is a cot. I had not slept in a cot, but uh, it did a number to me uh, on my back, and that may be part of the reason that I have don't have a lot of good recollection of my trip to and from Chicago because. I was almost debilitated and not able to work, but I was able to work through it and continue the project, even though it was in with a lot of pain. But again, these are uh, these are some memories uh, of my trips with the Carter administration. On the left there, you have uh, people, uh, Jessica Wallace that I mentioned to you, came uh, with us back to Atlanta, and she rode the bus back with us and stayed with us overnight, and I carried her to the airport on Sunday when she went back to New York to the uh, uh, building where we first met her in 1984. Unfortunately, you know, all these projects work uh, out. In 19, uh, excuse me, in 2010, the bottom right picture is a picture of that project that we spent so much time building, abandoned uh, and uh, 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 boarded up. I don't know the story about what happened to that area, that project, project but it just as a reminder to us, me of some of the carnies that I mentioned earlier. The long way, there's all kinds of good and uh, things that happen. And sometimes uh, people in the wake of good things have difficulties. And even that project is a reminder of that. This is a, uh, a program from the church that we worshiped in on Sunday there at the Lutheran Church. And I want to say in tribute to the Carters that uh, I don't know of any president that has had the kind of legacy he has after his presidency. Now, people who uh, achieve the kind of things that the Carters 
have achieved uh, are not likely to be as humble as this couple. And to me, I chose the picture at the left because uh, I remember seeing them walking down in front of the uh, Capitol after he was elected president hand in hand. And many pictures that I have seen since that time, they were walking hand in hand. And of course, Mrs. Carter passed away a short time ago and President Carter is almost 100 now. And their life is an example uh, in marriage. They are good examples of what it is to live out your faith as a Christian and uh, who have engaged in being leaders around the world and inspiration for people around the world. I count it a privilege to have been at the, to work with, on this project with them and Nick Millard and Linda Fuller, uh, even though my projects have been uh, no further than New York and Chicago. I worked on a lot of local projects, even working at the Americas Project, and worked on other projects that were unrelated to Habitat. But these people, even though uh, they reach this level, their lives are so uh, filled with people, there's no way that they can look far much further than their own family to count on them to be the people in their life that they can count on from the beginning to the end of life. And to me, that has been uh, a part of a revelation of my own journey. I read a book a number of years ago uh, uh, that helped me to understand that the things that I want most and the things that are satisfying most to me are not in some distant land not in some far place, but are right in my backyard. As you begin to look at your life, take the example of these people. In these days of difficulty that they have faced in the journeys that all of us face in life, they have found the same thing. That is, only those who are nearest and dearest to you are the people that you can count on from uh, to care for you and to walk with you to the end of life. So our journeys carry us in many different places. My life has been filled with rich and wonderful experiences that uh, people who have aspired and done many wonderful things. And this is just one small portion of my journey. There have been many people that will never be known and you will never hear of who have made similar, if not as important, a contribution to my life. I, I thank you for listening to my story, and I hope that I will have the opportunity, or my grandchildren will have the opportunity to hear this story from me as you have. You have a great day, and thank you for listening.